If this is your aesthetic, but in reality, this is how you feel while studying, then all you need to learn is the art of romanticizing studying and exam season. Don't worry, you've arrived at the right corner of the internet. One of the most asked questions on this channel is how do you study so much? And the simplest way to answer that is that, is that I, I enjoy, enjoy study. study. The easiest form to get through exam season is by romanticizing exam season. It's by romanticizing those study hours. And I know, romanticizing exam season seems to be an alien concept. Trust me, I would like to say that I know something about it. So today I'm going to be sharing 10 secrets by which I romanticize exam season. Consider this to be a guide to be that student. Let's go. Number one, make study playlists. If you've been watching my channel, you probably know how many times I've shared my study playlist. I've made about three or four. Not just does it set the mood and set the vibe to study, but it also triggers your brain. Let me just explain. Okay, so I made a study playlist. This one, which is my current favorite one. I made this in my second year final exam. I used to listen to this every time that I had to study during the whole exam exam season and then in my third year when I sat to study and I had zero motivation to study I played this playlist kind of tricked my brain into thinking that remember all the memories you have about study while this is played so it definitely kind of trains your brain and somehow tricks it into studying I personally feel less sleepy while songs are playing in the background and it is even scientifically proven that music helps to increase your concentration and if you're wondering music distracts you and not able to focus as much you are not playing the right music don't go with something upbeat try something lo-fi kind of relax Sing, not too many words. I prefer piano or some instrumental music. Props to if they have alpha, beta, theta waves because they also help you increase your concentration. Number two, the perfect desk setup. Make sure that you clean your study space before you study. It is essential and necessary that you study in a clean environment. If my room is messy, I'll probably go to the reading room slash the library to study. Or if I have to study in my room, I will always make sure that the desk is clean. The more cluttered your study space is, the less motivation you would have to study. Make your study space as aesthetic as you want it to be, add some vision boards, print out some study motivation quotes and just stick it to the wall. I would highly suggest you to stick your vision or your inspiration that drives you to study. For example, if you're preparing for some competitive exam, go ahead and print out some pictures that is about the life that you would have once you clear those exams. Trust me, they really help you in motivating, especially when you're like, mm, I don't want to study more, I'll just take a break. Look at that poster and remind yourself that you are working for that life. Do you really need a break now? Before we move forward, let's take a break. I just wanted to show you all a challenge that I recently took. This is Mama Earth Vitamin C Daily Glow Face Serum. This has 5% Vitamin C which has 50 times stronger Vitamin C concentration to give you a daily glow. It also has 5% Niacinamide to even out your skin tone and turmeric which revives the natural glow. As you can see, this serum is super lightweight and quick absorbing. Today is day 7 of the One Bottle Challenge by Mama Earth. I'm going to be using their Vitamin C Daily Serum as a part of my daily regime in both morning and night. Here are the before and after results. It has visibly increased the glow in my face. Every time you buy something from Mama Earth, they link your order to a tree that they plant. By 2025, Mama Earth is aiming to plant 1 million trees as a part of this initiative. Their products are available on Amazon, Nikon, and Flipkart and you can also find them in your nearest stores. I will be linking the products in the description and don't forget to use my code 802024 to get 20% off on Mama Earth's website and app. Number 3. Keep changing your study space. Oh my god, this is something that I've been doing from so long I can't even remember. This always helps to trick my mind to feel that oh, now we have a fresh start and it kind of leads me to less exhaustion. When I'm bored studying in my room, I would go to the library. Environment helps a lot in the motivation factor. When I'm in library and I see other people study, it motivates me to study. If I'm bored at the library, I would literally go to a cafe to study. When I was at home, I used to just switch the rooms that I would study. Sometimes I would study in my room, then sometimes in the guest room, sometimes at the dining table even. Basically, I used to just switch the places and that really, really helped. Okay, number four, use cute stationery. You can get tons of cute notebooks, pens, stationery at a very cheap price on Amazon. And make sure that the stationery you're getting is something useful and not something that you're not even gonna use. Whenever I get something new, I'm so excited to use it. Number five, make good notes. I've been using this strategy from when I was in class 11. I used to have these colorful notes. I used to use all the colored pens, highlighters, and whatever I could to make my notes as appealing as I could. When you have good notes, you kind of get the motivation to also use and read them. Even today, when I make my notes on my iPad, I make sure that those are not just aesthetic, but are also useful. Annotating things which are important, explaining something that I know I would forget the next time I read it. Every time that I sit to study, I try to make my notes easier to understand. 
understand for me. Invest your time in making good notes. Because the way I see it, I have spent three hours in making good notes right now. I saved about one hour in reading them the next time. Number six, have a study partner. Honestly, I feel very grateful and lucky to have a study partner. I know not everyone does. However, these days there are many sites. I'll just put some here where you can have a study partner. When I used to be at home, I used to video call my friend. We used to literally study on video call. Having a study partner not just makes you feel more accountable when you're studying, but it also has a weird way of motivating you to study. It kind of pushes you to be even better than you would have been. You can make the process even more fun by quizzing each other, by exchanging notes. I don't know if this happens in almost every college, but at least in med school, nights before exams, people are there in each other's room and they're teaching each other different topics. It makes the whole process of learning very quick, fun, and somehow you also retain it in a better way. Number seven, film while you're studying. I get a lot of comments asking me, don't you get distracted while you're filming, especially during your exam season? And the answer is no, it actually is just the opposite. It increases my concentration. Let me tell you how. Number one, while I'm filming, I am not using my phone because my phone is actually filming. I would advise you to keep your phone in the time-lapse mode so that whenever you're done studying and you look at the footage, it gives you such a release. So it's a great way to stay away from the biggest distraction that we all have, which is our phones. Oh, and for a weird reason, whenever I'm filming while I'm studying, I feel like someone has eyes on me, so I better study. Number eight, try different study techniques. Everyone studies in a different way. I never someone told this to me while I was in school, but you don't really have to compare yourself to someone else and the way they study. It's literally the worst thing that you could do to yourself. Find out the way that suits best for you because we all have different techniques and different ways that suits our brain and the way we study. There are so many techniques from making flashcards, Ivy Lee, Finman, Cornell note-taking method, and I've made a whole video on this. So if you don't know all the techniques of studying and you're really lost, you can go check that video out and find a method that works the best for you. Number nine, write a list of all the things that you want to do once your exams are over. Trust me, it's the best way. It can't just be me who gets distracted during exam season by doing all those different things that I should not be doing but I'm just waiting to do. I always make a list about all the things that I want to do after it. Maybe traveling, maybe filming a video. Those things really ignite a spark in me. Just finish all those exams and live the life that I really want to once they are over. So take out some time to visualize your success and think about all the things that you are waiting to do. Having a positive outlook can really motivate you to study while those tough study session. When I was having my exams right now, all I could think about is me transforming this room, cleaning it, making those big changes that I've been waiting to. I'm in the process of that, by the way. So if you want to see a whole room transformation, it's coming very, very soon on this channel. And if you're interested in watching that, then make sure you subscribe. And finally, we come to the last secret of this video. Number 10, change your perspective for exam season and study. Instead of looking at exam season as the worst time of our life, look at it as an experience which makes us stronger. Whenever I look back at my exam vlog video, I just always am kind of shocked by the way that I study. It kind of makes me realize that I was so strong. I was studying for 11 hours in a day. This just proves that I can study for 11 hours a day. One another way you can look at it is by correlating things that you study. A very random example is while I was studying physics, I used to think this is the most useless thing. Why am I studying this? Or some days after when I went for my eye examination, I was like, hmm, I know about these lenses and uh, I know what convex and concave lenses are. I know that's like the very basic thing, but there are many people who don't. Such things just make me feel really smart and I feel so confident and anything which makes you feel more confident, how can that be bad for you? Remember, the key is to making studying a positive and more enjoyable part of your life. By incorporating elements that appeal with your senses and align with your interests, you can turn exam season into a more pleasant and even a romanticized experience. Daily reminder that studying is a privilege, not a chore. There's a world of knowledge out there and we have the opportunity to explore some of this. So change your mindset. With that, we come to the end of this video. I really hope that this helped you all in some way or the other. Comment down below which secret will you be taking from this video. One last thing that I had to say before ending this video. Um, someone wisely said, everything is fair in love and exams. Might be a little toxic attitude, but we're here for it, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Comment down Maggie if you watched till here so that I know that you're the real one. See you guys in the next video. Bye. Yoga.